Okay. Okay. So I guess introduction again and then click through. Okay. And then I think two more clicks and I'll just talk on this slide. Um, so as I mentioned, starting back at the beginning, I'm interested in nitrogen in the York River during high discharge conditions. Um, and so nitrogen is really important because it is one of the major building blocks for our life. Uh, so phytoplankton and bacteria use different forms of nitrogen and take it into um, their structures to build biomass. Um, so in the assimilation process, they use nitrogen to build their proteins as well as DNA and other metabolic structures. And then nitrogen can also be used for energy generation. So then on the next slide, um, the form of nitrogen actually matters. Um, so there are two main forms of nitrogen. And throughout my talk, you'll see two abbreviations for these two different groups. The first is DIN or dissolved inorganic nitrogen. And DIN is primarily consists of, and then if you click through, um, ammonium, nitrate, and nitrite. And then the other main pool of nitrogen is dissolved organic nitrogen, um, which is sometimes thought of a bit as a black box. Um, so there's multiple components of DON. Um, so if you click through two more times, or one more after this. And then um, DON can com be composed of small organic compounds that we know of, amino acids, urea, as well as bigger compounds such as proteins, humic acids. And then one more click is um, a lot of uncharacterized material. Um, and so DON is a bit of a big pool to look at. A lot of times researchers only look at the bulk amount of DON present rather than looking at the individual components of DON. Um, however, the study is actually going to look at a couple of individual components of DON. Um, so next click, we're going to look at amino acids and urea as representatives of DON. Then next slide. Um, so again, we're all focusing on the York River ver in Virginia. And the York River is supplied by its two tributaries which the next click pops up, the Mattapunai and the Pamunkey Rivers. And the Mattapunai and the Pamunkey deliver um, nutrients as well as nitrogen to the York River estuary. And the amount of nutrients that enter the York River depends on the background conditions, which it, if you click, um, can be driven by precipitation changes as well as discharge. Um, and then if you can click so this figure is showing the change in discharge and from the Mattapunai and the Pamunkey into the York River estuary. So if you look on the x-axis, we have our monthly years and on our y-axis, we have our discharge. And the blue boxes is showing the average monthly discharge from 1972 to 2017, whereas the red line is showing the discharge during my sampling period, which was between May of 2018 and July of 2019. And you can see by looking at the red line that during this time period, the York River experienced higher than normal discharge. Um, this was particularly due to a couple of storm fronts as well as um, hurricane remnants from, if you remember, Hurricane Florence passing through the er era, area. Um, so this gives us a bit of a snapshot of what the York River's background nitrogen cycling conditions might be um, during a period of higher discharge, um, which can be important if you click <laughs> um, to periods of higher precipitation, which may fluctuate um, in the future in this region with climate change. So if you go to the next slide, um, I had two primary research objectives. My first was to determine the pattern of DIN and DON uptake during a period of high discharge. And secondly, to quantify the of organic nitrogen uptake in the system. So then to the next slide. Um, in order to do this, I sampled four channel stations in the York River. Um, we sampled bi-monthly, so between June of 2018 to July of 2019. And if you look at my figure, we can see that I have four sites, upper, mid, lower, and mouth, moving from up estuary to down estuary. So then if you click, um, so how I looked at how different nitrogen forms were used was by conducting a series of uptake incubation experiments. Um, so I took 
isotopically labeled DIN and DON and added it to whole water that I collected in the York River estuary. So for my DIN substrates, I used N15 labeled ammonium and nitrate that also had a C13 bicarbonate addition. And then for my DON substrates, I used dually labeled urea and amino acids. And then to the next slide. Um, so after collecting water from the York River, we brought it back to VIMS where we set up our incubation experiments. So clicking through, um, first we filtered for background ambient nutrients and then click. Um, then we spiked our incubation bottles with those N15 and C13 labeled substrates. And next, then we incubated for one hour um, using ambient temperature and light conditions, which basically gave the York River community time to use the N15 that we added and incorporate in them into their biomass. So if you click, you can see the red N15 moving into our phytoplankton cells. Then we, at the end of our one hour, we collected biomass onto filters by um, vacuum filtration, and then we kept those filters to later measure uptake rates using mass spectrometry. Okay, next slide. Um, so first, jumping back into data, um, I'm going to be showing some background nutrients from our sampling period. So on the x-axis, we have our sampling months, and on our y-axis, we have concentration of nitrogen and micromoles of nitrogen per liter. Um, I just want to point out that in April, we were unable to reach our upper site, um, but you'll see as I show the other panels representing our other estuarine sites um, that we were able to reach the rest of the York in April. So to start out, yes, uh, we had ammonium in blue, um, which was quite high for the region. You can see at times it was greater than eight micromoles of nitrogen per liter. And then nitrate and nitrite, which is combined as NOx in red, which was very high for the York. Um, you can see in October that it was over 10. This is in comparison to our organic nitrogen substrates that if you click again, um, were quite a bit lower, um, typically less than one micromole of nitrogen per liter. And so this same trend was seen across all of our sites um, generally. So if you click through the mid, lower, and mouth. Um, however, you can generally notice that nutrients decreased as we move from our upper to our mouth site. And if you click one more time. So I just wanted to put these stars on here for you guys to keep in mind for later in my talk. Um, but the starred sites are points where the background ammonium concentrations were greater than one micromole of nitrogen per liter. So then next slide. So this is going to present my nitrogen uptake rates. However, instead of presenting a raw rate, um, these are compiled as percent total nitrogen uptake and micromoles of nitrogen per liter per hour um, so that we can compare the different substrates more clearly with each other. Um, to start off and orient everyone, you're going to be looking at June, which immediately looking off, you can see that the primary the form of nitrogen primarily taken up was ammonium. And then if you click again, and this trend was seen for many of the months that we sampled, including December, April, and July. However, so, and then click again. So primarily in the York River, we saw that ammonium was the form of nitrogen that was taken up by phytoplankton and bacteria at the greatest rate. However, this trend did vary somewhat seasonally. Um, so if you click again, and then one more time, so um, we did see a difference in late summer, early fall. Um, so you can see here in green that urea, organic urea uptake was much greater during the later season, later months of the summer. So click again. Yep. Um, again, so urea had the greatest uptake in late fall, late summer and fall. And then clicking again, One more, yep, okay. So this is where the stars come in. Um, so about, these are the months in sampling when ammonium concentrations were greater than one micromole of nitrogen per liter. And why this matters is because high ammonium concentrations can um, 
back suppress the uptake of nitrate. So even though nitrate was very high in the York River, we weren't seeing high uptake rates of nitrate into the phytoplankton community. So then clicking again. Now looking at February, we can see these trends pretty clearly. So if you click again, just focusing on February, you can see that in the upper part of the estuary, the ammonium concentrations were actually just above one and we can see lower uptake of nitrate. But then as we move down estuary, click, and ammonium concentrations decreased, we can see, if you click again, that nitrate uptake increased. And then, next slide. Um, we also looked at total carbon uptake. So this slide is formatted the same as the last one, except the y-axis actually starts at 80% so that we can look at the bicarbonate, urea, and amino acid carbon uptake more clearly. And if you click again, you can clearly see in the gray that bicarbonate uptake is our primary form of carbon uptake. However, you can also see that the green urea was unusually high in April. And if you click, um, so use it, seeing urea carbon uptake is actually pretty unusual. And this corresponded to a procentrum chorodotum like dinoflagellate bloom. Um, and so taking up urea carbon is pretty unusual. So on the structure here of urea, typically what phytoplankton and bacteria do is break the nitrogen to carbon bond, taking up the nitrogen and then releasing the carbon as CO2. Um, so seeing the carbon uptake rather than the release of um, urea carbon as CO2 is pretty unusual. So next slide. So the key findings for this were first, um, that nitrogen uptake dynamics varied during our period of high discharge. Um, so generally we saw that ammonium uptake was the greatest, followed by nitrate, urea, and amino acids, which has been already established in the York River, but we did see some variation. Um, so we did see that ammonium uptake was greater than urea rather than nitrate during the fall. And then if you click again, um, but one of the really cool things that we saw is that even though the York River was having this high input of nitrate, ammonium uptake was still much greater than nitrate as long as the ammonium concentrations were greater than one. And then next, we also saw urea carbon uptake in April, which is pretty unusual. Um, but if you click again, um, this corresponded with P. chordatum uh, dinoflagellate being present in the York River. Um, and there's been some research done by Margie Mulholland over in the James River that P. chordatum seems to be able to use this urea carbon, um, which may be a way of them outcompeting um, other phytoplankton and bacteria that are present. And then I just have some acknowledgements. Um, the slide's also animated, but uh, first off, my advisors, uh, Debbie Bronk and BK Song, um, my lab manager, Quinn Roberts, who I couldn't do this without, um, and then tons of people who helped me go out in the field as well as filtering. Um, these are major operations, like this picture shows it took five to six people to filter all the samples I needed. And then finally, my funding sources, the VIMS Office of Academic Studies and Virginia Sea Grant. Um, and I'm not sure where we are timing wise because we were a little slow at the beginning, but thank you everyone for bearing with me <laughs> going through this. I really appreciate it. <laughs>